Hey, Brad. Hey. Thanks for joining me. All right. Thanks for having me. Um, so we're here at FluentConf uh, having a great time uh, showcasing Widgmo, um, talking Angular 2. Um, and you know, our, our company has a history of working in platforms. So we are used to .NET, we're used to Silverlight, um, WPF, things that give us a very solid foundation to build on. Um, and you know, up until recently, the web has been the Wild West with no clear path, just many trails to get to the end point. Mm -hmm. So um, you know, we have really embraced Angular 1 originally and now Angular 2. Uh, and it's kind of become our framework of choice uh, and a lot of our customers' frameworks of choice. So uh, do you feel like it's becoming the standard framework of the web? Uh, are there competing frameworks? Um, you know, wh where does Angular stand in the web ecosystem? They, uh, okay, so in, in terms of frameworks, yeah, I think Angular is doing very well. And we, we track our sort of viewership, if you will. Like how many developers are writing Angular apps in a couple different ways? One is through a number of people coming to our doc site every month. And this is, and even Angular 1, though we've announced Angular 2, uh, it's continued to grow. We went from like 1.1 million in October to about 1.3 million here in March. When we look at like the Google web crawls and other, other ways that people look at what is actually deployed out there, yeah, I think in terms of frameworks, Angular is far on top. If we look compared to other web libraries like jQuery, you're like, no, no, we're just these small guys. Um, but for, you, you know, if you want, help putting it all together with a framework, then yeah, I think it's doing well. Yeah, uh, and do you see any kind of uh, uh, competition or, or more interesting convergence in, in the, the competing frameworks? There, are there? there are, I mean, we talk a lot to the folks at Ember, like Yehuda, just because we collaborate with them a lot on new web standards. And we have some friends over in the React team, and I think like these guys are all doing very interesting things also. I'm really interested in, yes, and how we can all collaborate. I mean, one of those ways is through this new standard we've been talking about called zones. And, and what zones are is it's kind of like if you know in Java, they're called thread locals, but kind of a way to track virtual machine event turns so that we in the framework realm can build better scheduling and do more efficient communication. It had some other benefits, but I think there will be other examples of ways we, that we in the framework side can all collaborate so that we can make all of our frameworks better. Yeah, well, I, th I think that's great to see. Um, and you know, that's, that's something really ambitious. Uh, I think Angular 2 is uh, very ambitious, but at the same time, it's, it's coming to fruition. We're seeing it you know, come together. Um, and you know, one, of, one of the ambitious things uh, from our end was this concept of components. Mm -hmm. And they seem to have kind of taken center stage uh, in, in application architecture. So um, are, are they center stage, and is, um, or should developers you know, start thinking of architecturing their applications differently and re really rethinking components versus directives? Yeah, so, so directive, you can do component style architecture with directives, and it's, it, but it's not as well defined and it doesn't guide you down the path the way components do. And it's kind of like in Angular 1, we had directives and controllers. And what we found is like in the wild, you never find them apart. So why not make them into one structure? And that's really what we have in Angular 2. And so even in Angular 1, in the 1.5 release, we've kind of backported that syntax. We now have a component style where the, these two are bound together. But in Angular 2, yeah, that's the default. It's really nice because it just lets everybody who comes to Angular understand what they're looking at when they see the code. Like, oh, it's a component. I know that it's going to have these pieces and how it interacts with the rest of my app. OK, yeah. Um, another you know, kind of surprise to us was TypeScript. Mm -hmm. um, and you know, kudos to the choice. I think that's that's great to see another, you know, embracing a you know a, a outside technology, if you will. Mm -hmm. um, and you know, at Grape City, working on Widgmo, we actually originally wrote our source code in TypeScript. So uh, it was great for us to see that yeah. Angular 2 <laughs> happened to be using TypeScript. Um, and our Angular 2 integration was actually. You know, almost beautifully clean. Like we could create these almost empty classes that extended our you know grid control classes, chart control classes, uh, and then just add a little bit of decoration to those, and we had Angular two components. So Sweet. Um, we're glad to see that. Um, you know, what do you see um, developers doing? Do you see a lot of them writing reusable components? Do you see them adopting TypeScript, or do you think people might uh, stick with JavaScript? So we actually, we were very worried about this when we started moving to like writing ourselves in TypeScript and thinking that we were, people 
thinking we were trying to force them to use TypeScript, and we really weren't. Um, but it does, it does you know, beg a question that, you know, how much should we invest in one language versus another in terms of documentation and tools and, and all these good things? And so we've kind of been surveying people all along. And early on, yes, everyone said, ah, I'm going to stick on ECMAScript 5. Um, and then as time went on, ES6 seemed more popular. But now TypeScript is the preferred thing that people say they're going to be using when they build Angular 2 apps. Seconded a little bit by ES6, but really a tiny group has only said they're on, they want to be on ES5. I think there are a lot of folks who are probably maybe afraid to say it, like, oh, I'm not the cool kid beyond ES5. We, we want to be helpful. We actually want to help you get at least to ES6 because there's some real big developer ergonomic benefits. You're just going to write better code. And then if you feel comfortable, yeah, add some types to that. It'll be really good. Yeah, I, I, we, we've had a lot of benefits um, using TypeScript. That's why we wrote all of our source code in TypeScript, mm -hmm. uh, especially coming from a C Sharp background. Mm -hmm. You know, we, we wrote a version of Widgmo uh, just in JavaScript, you know, and we had a similar experience that you had. When you go to TypeScript, you find all these nuanced little bugs that uh, your testing didn't cover. Yeah. So um, That's right. I also, you know, I think it's important for people to hear your experience, you know, that you, the team, found bugs in Angular when moving to TypeScript, I think that really justifies you know, uh, the community embracing it as well. Yeah, and some of our developers said, ah, I finally understand how Angular works. Uh, like, we have a big code base, and it's complex. And just the ability to traverse and understand what the types are, the contracts between the parts of your app, I think it's really good. Yeah, yeah. Um, so obviously, Angular 2 is uh, you know, filling a huge um, gap or hole in the, in the web ecosystem and providing you know, a, a nice, clear path for building applications very quickly. Mm -hmm. But it's not doing everything. Mm -hmm. So um, you know, companies like us can provide third-party components, uh, like our high-performance FlexGrid and mm -hmm. FlexChart, data entry controls. Yep. Um, you know, what are some of the other things that you do plan adding, and maybe some things that you plan on not adding to Angular 2? So I, I think one of the things we got really that, that helped us be successful on Angular One is making space for partners to build things and not trying to do everything ourselves, but like building these sort of uh, well understood interaction paradigms, contracts, if you will, like so that you can like oh here's how you build components in Angular, you can build a wonderful suite uh, of things. Same for the data source end of things, I think like we're not going to build data sources and or, or ways to sync data or any of these things. But we might build some nice ways for those to interact with UI widgets and pathways for them to be successful. So you know, I, I think Meteor is pretty cool. I think the GraphQL stuff that the React guys are doing is, is neat. Um, Falcor that the, the Netflix guys are doing. So th these are all really nice things that will fit well in Angular and that we're going to help make them successful in that, in that arena. OK, cool. Um, and so the last question um, that's on everyone's mind is release date. When, when can we expect it, and uh, when should people start building production applications in Angular 2? So we at Google, we're already building production applications and have already shipped some in Angular 2. So unless there's something you're waiting for, um, which there could be, IETNN and animations would be the two big things, I think. If you don't need those, I think you can start deploying already. But certainly, you can start building your apps on Angular 2 already. Um, when's it going to ship? Uh, I actually don't know. So we're, we're actually going to be driven by the features and the quality rather than a particular date, because we could say, ah, oh, it's done now, and it, you know, it wouldn't be what people want. But what we did is we think we're pretty close. So we built a milestone on GitHub that you can track, and you can see how close we're getting. And we're hopefully not too far away. OK, great. Um, and you know, from our perspective, we are already seeing some very large companies um, Building production apps. I mean, they're not in production yet, but mm -hmm. you know, we see some some fairly large adoption already of both our components and Angular too. So I think it's already a good sign. Wonderful. That's great to hear. All right. Well, uh, we're looking forward to the release. Uh, we'll be on the edge of our seats waiting for it. With <laughs> me too. I think uh, <laughs> the rest of the developers out there. And thanks very much for your time. Thanks for having me.